This is a big, big victory, a big upset. It has to be said, North London, Tottenham Hotspur have come to the London Stadium and at full time it's finished West Ham nil, Spurs 2. Listen, all I'm going to say is we can't keep creating these chances that we're creating and not taking. It's absolutely killing us. This is a game on paper we should be winning, but we haven't. I think it will, it will definitely play on their minds. I'm sure Jilly Flatty, as a, as a vocal member of the squad, uh, won't be afraid to, to voice her opinions and say it needs to be better going forward. That's a very healthy breakfast he's having. He's got some very bad habits from me. Losing the local derby to Spurs has pushed West Ham down to eighth in the table. Tottenham took their chances, we didn't. Uh, and, and that's when you needed to win it, when you had like 25,000 people at the stadium and it cost so much money to turn the key at that stadium. But we wanted to have play a game. Must... Do you mean you lost money? We did. We... Even with the shop? We, the shop only made 10 or 15 grand, the Jack. But we spent the entire gate money on that and advertising to bring people mm -hmm. in. You know, there are positives. The sponsors like it. Mm -hmm. You bring in a few new supporters to the club, some of whom will come back. It's fascinating, really, to see where, where it'll all end up. It's a much tougher division this year. Those top clubs have got the people who can shoot, they've got the finishers, they've got midfielders who can smash them in from 30 or 40 yards. And we haven't got that at the moment. Short of having £3 million to spend, it'd be the biggest freak of all circumstances to win the league. I mean, if they got relegated, it'd be a disaster. Right, we've got a lot to get through today. So, I'm going to announce the team this morning. So you're going to have probably one or two that are going to be sulking they're not playing, but at the end of the day, that's life. I've just got to get on with it, get the head down and, and, and do the job that we need. A week after the disappointing loss at the London Stadium, the squad are preparing for a busy month of back-to-back -back games. And head coach Matt Beard wants to change his players' mindset to try and turn the results around. I've been speaking to one or two coaches that I trust, and one thing that when they've observed and watched us when we play is that we're a soft touch. So that's what other people think of us when we play. When I look at the Tottenham clips, you'll see some clips of people walking, and hence the changes that I've made to the team for this weekend. I'm not having people fucking walk. The hard work is the one thing that you've got to put into your game. So I want that in your head, all right? Nothing's ever personal when you come to picking a team, but we'd love to make sure that we bounce back with a, with a win. We've made two changes. Kenz is in for Kate Longhurst, and Adriana's been a little bit inconsistent. From my perspective, if they want to get back in the team, they've got to be positive, they've got to be a good team, mate, and they've got to work hard to get back into it. It's a tough one, because you want to give them that freedom for them to express themselves on the pitch, but maybe I've given them a little bit too much freedom. Matt is dependent on one of his most senior players to bring the squad together. Ah, oh, no, Matt. Because yeah. we believe, we know you've got it in you. As West Ham captain, Jilly Flaherty is the link between the players and the coaching staff, closely involved in the move to the new training ground, Chadwell Heath. Fine, Matt. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, so well. oh, <laughs> we do this every time. We never know who's like this. So sort of like, <laughs> just hug, let's hug in future, right? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm ready. The role's full time. Like, I didn't appreciate it maybe when I was a vice captain at, say, Chelsea, because I probably didn't really understand and probably appreciate it, to be honest. How's your office looking? Give him that telly. Uh, that's your telly, Russ. That's his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Things ain't clicking within the team, then. A lot is, is focused on me to try and get the girls together. It can be lonely, but 
Luckily, I've got good people around me. I, I can talk to BD. Are they putting uh, mirrors out here? Just when we walk out, we can just make sure we look all right. To walk out the door, you know? You know, we're only training. We're only training here, aren't we? We're training, BD. I'll always have loyalty for him, because at the end of the day, BD give me the armband, give me the, the responsibility and the, the faith behind me, do you know what I mean? And I always say I'll always be in debt to him for it. We're like twins today. At 28 years old, Jilly has spent over a decade playing at the top of women's football and has seen a complete transformation of the game. So I was 12 when I went to Arsenal. We was the number one, we'd win everything. And then left to go to Chelsea. When I was at Arsenal, I was doing four jobs. We're part of the generation that we know what it takes to graft up. We ain't just got it given to us in a play. As a veteran of the era where players paid to play, Jilly's no stranger to the side hustle. This is for, obviously, when I do my locksmith job. I say I'm a qualified burglar. And with the end of her career in sight, she sets up a new business with her girlfriend. Together, they've ploughed tens of thousands of pounds of their savings into a brand new shop that offers a modern twist on an old-fashioned ice bath. My shop's a cryotherapy shop, so it's something as well that I'll benefit from when playing. I mean, I did want to open a greasy spoon, but the idea got rejected. I might get some paint and decorating jobs from this, you know? This is basically the machine that, obviously, you stand in. The nitrogen is blown into it. It can go down to, like, minus 140 when it's in there. So it's a cold. Our machine comes on Wednesday for this, a fat freezing sort of machine. But it can be used for facials, it can be used for toning, uh, slimming, cellulite, things like that. So we've got literally everything for everyone. None of this was it. We didn't have no shop front. We've literally got it from scratch and all our savings are in this. I know realistically that I'm more coming towards the end of the, my career with my age, but you have to remain tough, do you know what I mean? You have to remain strong-minded because football is a roller coaster and tables turn all the time. Are you going to miss me? Yeah. No. I'm going to miss you. For the youngest member of the squad, following her dream of becoming one of the best players on the planet means she'll be on the other side of the world, away from her mum for the very first time. I'm very sad to leave Cinta. She's my baby. <laughs> no, I'm not Jones. And what's the main reason that you're going home now? Uh, my daughter's having a baby. First grandson in the family. Yeah, it's hard because we are quite a strong family when we're together. So being apart has been, how can I explain that? We're like a jigsaw puzzle. Everybody has their role. And it's like almost a few pieces missing and dealing with that has been difficult. It'll be all right. No, no I'll miss her, but it won't be that bad. I mean, I'll miss her cooking. <laughs> I don't have much time to to <laughs> to sulk or anything anyway because we're very busy with mm. football. So I'll be gone about seven weeks. It's the longest I've ever been away from her. It's all it's all worth it though for football. And do you have any advice for Jacinta? Uh, Jacinta needs to just be very patient with everything in life. I'm patient. Mm, very. Don't let anything upset you. Remember your ultimate goal, not the little steps in front of you, the ultimate goal. She's only 18 and she's got so many years ahead. So just take it one step at a time. I don't know what else. I'm getting emotional. Ay, Dios mío, tranquila. Thank you. Do you reckon I'm on there? Probably not. Now in his second season in charge of the Women's Super League team, Jack's attracted more than just the attention of the die-hard Hammers fans. I'm not in the top 20, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's been invited to an award ceremony celebrating London's most influential thousand people. There he is. <laughs> and the 19-year-old has made the list. Generally interested to see who's actually there tonight. You can't imagine a lot of these people turn up. We've had the game at the London Stadium. Yeah. That's cool. We lost 2-0. Still got the same manager? Yeah. The same uh... Same every, uh, coach and stuff, everything, yeah. Did you buy any new players? Yes. Oh, the, wow. These are cracking questions. So it was like um, eight in, eight out. I think it was eight. <laughs> Seven or eight. Got uh, some hairspray in it? Yeah, please. Just in case. Gareth's there. Gareth who? Southgate. He's on the list. <laughs> I paid by card. So I'll spend it all on... Uh, Hold on, women's transfers. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. I've never Ooh. seen you. Ginny, let's make a karaoke. But it's not just Jack lapping up the spotlight. To attract both fans and sponsors to the club, the squad are busy getting in front of as many eyes as possible. So you can't play for West Ham and been here <laughs> over a year and a half now without trying jelly ill where you're trying to grow a football club. Our biggest asset is, is the players. They would do lots of stuff for the club. Oh. They'll do stuff for our sponsors, photo shoots, all of the products the players will be in. Thanks. Christmas is coming. September, come on. <laughs> we do stuff just for our own social channels so the fans can get to know the players a bit more. Hello, everyone. My name is Julia Simic, and this is Ask Sitchi. And get to see that, I suppose, that I don't, I don't want to say the word. Banter. <laughs> <laughs> the girls are so accessible as well, and they start to build that personal relationship with lots of people, like almost like a deeper connection, I suppose. Florence is the big fan. I just take her along as daddy. Hi. There you go. All the players here? We all here? How many is that one? The whole squad will be using their platform in the spotlight to help promote an important cause. Can you all sit down, please? Oh, oh my God. Sit, no, sit down. Sit down. OK, so um, we're here today with Breast Cancer Now, basically. During the whole month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month um, in the UK. I'm not sure, is it nationally, globally? Yeah, we will basically be playing in this shirt, pink, because this the colour that the the ribbon as well. The men's team are also going to be doing little bits because I think it's 18 men a year get breast cancer in the UK. Is that right? 350. Slightly wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, it's saying that we think it's really, really important. Perfect. Cheers, thank you, guys. Since the start of the season, the team have brought in seven new players. And for one, French superstar Kenza Dali, the charity campaign have inspired her to open up about her own personal experience. And smile. It was a bad memory for me, because uh, in France, um, I don't want to speak about it. Uh, nobody knows that my mother has uh, cancer before, because this treatment is really hard. She was so, so brave, and I'm so proud of her. In my mother say, just speak about your story, because maybe there are a girl, she's fan of you, and she lives the same things, but she didn't know that you have this story, and maybe it can help her. And that's why I shared on my Instagram yesterday my story, and everyone was surprised. I think when I play football, I don't think about this shit, you know, because <laughs> it's really shit. With so many new faces in the squad this season, the next run of games will give the Hammers a chance to find their feet. We know we have the quality in this team. We've got to be clever, we've got to be horrible. And we'll try to put you under pressure, but you've got to say, ah. Get them out of the way, you get on the ball and you dictate it and you have the tempo. 
Or oh, Lehman, that's a really clever ball. Great chance for West Ham. And buried by Martha Thomas. Appeals for a penalty given. Buried. Wouldn't have kept that out, even if she guessed right. West Ham starting to enjoy themselves now. Alicia Lehman, deflection, goal. And that really is game over. A convincing win for West Ham United. Thank you, darling. Ready? You say it. One, two, three, iron. Ready? Iron! <laughs> Massively important that you don't let them have any bit in this game whatsoever today. Hey, come in! Get in, get in, get in! You're over them like rashes. You stick it on them. You get out there and you get this game won. Go on, Alicia, go on! Do it with me! There are some coaches who like to leave their players to it, and there are others who talk them through the game. Matt Beard is very much in the latter category. Ken, drop it! Ken, ref, get out of the way! Ken, stay! We need to make our own decisions. Just move the ball quickly, so we have to do it. We walk all the week like this. Teams don't like playing against you, do you know that? Because we've got so much talent in this squad. We'll leave nothing on that pitch today. You work as hard as you can. Gilly! Get Kaffer on the... Ah, oh, it's all right. An opportunity here for Thomas. Great save, but the rebound's in. Looking for room for a shot, maybe. Was unselfish instead. Behind victory for Emma Hayes' side here. Referee! Well, what I'm looking for from everyone today is 100% commitment for the Bulls. We are technically gifted players. Go out now and stand 10 feet tall. I'm tired of hearing people bitch on the field. It's so sickening. Stop blaming each other. Stop turning them on in the whole day. It's every week like this. <laughs> you deserve that win. Go fucking brilliant. Cool down together, stay together. Yes, well done. Two months and eight games into the season, Matt started seeing improvements on the pitch. Right, we'll just start with a match report. Who's watched the game back? But reflecting on their recent performances, he's concerned about negative attitudes affecting his squad. Like, we've seen a few things, a few bit of shit body language, which will then rub off on the rest of the group. Now, look at your body language here. What was the problem there on that? Nothing. But look at your reaction. The arm goes up. We can't have that. I've got a little conversation going on there. Got hands on hips, I've got heads down. If things don't go our way, sometimes we sulk. Listen, we can't have that as a group, right? You've shown immense character to get a result out of that game. I mean, look, this is a fucking great free kick. Look at their body language now. Look at your body language. Look what it meant to you collectively as a group. So you've proved, well, no matter what goes on, there's still time for you to get back and get a result from the game. Look what it meant to you all. We are playing top-level football. There's no easy game in this division. You can't pick and choose the moments about when you want to turn up. We can't have that reaction. We can't have that reaction. Angela. 
The player's attitude isn't the only thing the head coach has to worry about. As the intensity of the league takes its toll, illness and injuries have left Matt short of options on the pitch. And without a squad big enough to fill up his bench, he's had to recruit from outside the squad from the youth academy. At just 16 years old, Victoria Kiss Kiss isn't yet old enough to sign a professional contract and has to juggle her playing career around her schoolwork. And what is it you're studying? Um, sports businesses currently. It's like a C-Tech, so it's harder than GCSEs. It's going well. She's got the exam in January, so I should just study for that. What are you doing? What are you doing, baby? Oh. You have to do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby. Yeah, should I help you, maybe? What's the question? How? <laughs> I would like how can we uh, see that in school? Yes, good luck. <laughs> this is BBC Radio 5 Live. Right, it's a big weekend in the Women's Super League. For me, this weekend's really exciting. It's like, um, I can't wait. West Ham's next game will be their toughest test this season. Manchester City. It will be the first time the two sides have met since their last season's FA Cup final at Wembley. It's the last moment of the FA Cup final that belongs to Manchester City. And the last time West Ham travelled to Manchester, they suffered a crushing defeat. Full time, Manchester City 7, West Ham 1. The squad will need to come together as they prepare to face a team that boasts no less than nine England stars, including Jill Scott, Steph Houghton and England's World Cup top scorer, Ellen White. This, this is what we're expecting today. Kate, I want you in front of Jill Scott. Laura, you're marking Ellen White. Cecil, Steph Alton. Everyone else comfortable with their job there, yeah? We've all looked at it. We know what we're doing. Yes? OK. For me, it's just about living up to what we are as a group. You know what I mean? Now, this is a good opportunity today for us just to prove how good we actually are, because we all know it. And I said this from day one, performing week in, week out, working hard for each other week in, week out. You do that, you'll be OK. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Women's Football Weekend. We're focusing on the action at the Academy Stadium. Well, listen, we've said everything at the hotel, so get yourselves together, let's get out, and let's fucking get this game won. Come on, all right? Manchester City, as we mentioned, suffered their first Women's Super League defeat last time out. They've actually lost in all competitions in the last few weeks. They're out of the Champions League. This is a big game for them, isn't it? It really is. You know, West Ham are a really tricky opposition in terms of you don't know what kind of performance they got. And they, they have got some real game-changing players and, and, some, and some match winners. So we're just about ready for kickoff. It's Manchester City who get us underway. Well, Matt Beard has taken a position not in the dugout, but you can still hear him all the way up there. Here comes the corner kick. It's Jill Scott. It's off the line and it's in. Ellen White gets her first Women's Super League game on her first start. And Manchester City hit the front. Picture shows a thousand words there. Doesn't look too happy, does he? Scott into Ellen White, back to goal. Georgia Stanway, 2 0. It is so easy. Fuck, so. Looks like Matt Beard has uh, been moved to change his position. You know, it's so disappointing, and you can see in everyone's body language. But something's got to change, hasn't it? Three, 
is this not working? It's because we're all too quick to turn around and fucking moan at each other and say you're not doing this and you're not doing that. Fuck you, fuck you. Oh, fucking hell, she did this. Leave the fucking bollocks here. Just stop moaning. Terrible. Oigan is terrible. Jill Scott. Oh, that's a lovely ball. Hemp, 4 0. I wonder what he's right down. Don't go too mad, don't swear too much. But he has every right to, you know, it's, it's a collective effort. You know, these are elite professional players now, that, that's their own standards. You're fucking walking. That's embarrassing. You should be deeper, you should be there, Drew. Where are you? Where is she? Fuck it. Stan wait. Oh, that's another goal. This game is done and dusted. It's the 16-year-old Victoria Kiskus. Not the circumstances in which she'd like to enter the field, I'm sure. Oh, off the post with her first touch. So nearly getting her first goal in her WSL debut. And that is the full-time whistle. So nearly such a memorable debut for the Poland Youth International. Look, all I'm going to just say is that I've got to take responsibility for the result. Simple as that. I've either got the team wrong or I've got the fucking the, the tactics wrong. So if that's the case, I apologise. Uh, one down, people then start moaning at each other and getting on at each other, and then everyone then loses their heads and is waiting for someone else to fuck up so they can have a go at them. That's the yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. But, and, I, and I said it at half time, yeah? If some people are happy, unhappy here, and it's fucking obvious to see people are unhappy, pack your bags and go. Seriously. Because it's embarrassing. It happened last year, I mean, this year now. You're not bigger than this club. I mean, if it weren't for him, half you won't even be here. Majority of you won't be here. Because Jack won't fucking know about half of you. It's him. So we fucking show respect by doing it on the pitch. If you ain't happy, then go, please.